I was mistaken when I said we only had two epoxy resin videos. We have three. And this is video number two of three, curing technology for epoxy resins. Uh, so there are different ways of curing epoxy resins. Curing agents include catalysts, cross-linking agents, hardeners, or activators. And some of these things mean the same thing. But basically you're converting the liquid epoxy resin from a thermoplastic state into a tough, hardened, thermoset solid with the required properties. Like any thermoset, you're cross-linking it for that purpose. There are just some, distinct, some distinction that needs to be made between catalysts and cross-linking agents in epoxy resins. A catalyst, when we're talking about that, only facilitates the opening of the epoxy ring. And this is either in epoxy-epoxy or epoxy-hydroxyl type systems. The catalyst does not become part of the 3D network, just opens that ring. A cross-linking agent or a hardener or a curative participates in the curing process. In other words, it's chemically bound in the three-dimensional network structure of the solid thermal set. So, that's, so it, it opens up that ring and becomes part of the three-dimensional network. So in catalyst-based cross-linking, that's your epoxy-epoxy reactions or epoxy-hydroxyl reactions, uh, you open up the oxyrane ring using typically tertiary amines. So, so triethylamine or trimethylamine, and you can form very long chains this way. In an epoxy-hydroxyl reaction, the epoxy-oxyrane ring opens up and reacts with hydroxyl groups, um, and the hydroxyl groups are introduced into the resin by curing agents or modifiers. So here are some tertiary amine structures. So this is a nitrogen, so it's an amine. F these are ethyl groups, methylene, so one, two carbons here. And then this is trimethylamine, so one here. So triethylamine, trimethylamine. This is catalyst-based cronklinging, so this is epoxy-epoxy reaction. So you have, this is opening up here, it's opening up the ring. Uh, you create this structure here, which can then interact and uh, open up another ring. And this just kind of goes on and on and on. Cross-linking agents, uh, there are a wide variety of those. Uh, amines, organic acids, acid anhydrides, Lewis acids like boron trifluoride complexes, and other resin agents, so polyamides, polysulfides, phenolics. Um, aliphatic amines are the most commonly used curing agent, and these are characterized by short pot lives, so 30 minutes to 2 hours. They have high exotherms. Um, aliphatic amines can create skin sensitivity and respiratory difficulties. Uh, but they result in the heat deflection temperature of the epoxy of 200 to 250 Fahrenheit. So again, these become part of the 3D network. So these are not tertiary, these are secondary amines, and that's why they become a part of the network. So this is diethylene triamine. So diethylene, two ethylene groups here, triamine, one, two, three. Triethylene tetramine, so triethylene, one, two, three, tetramine, one, two, three, four, and so on. So these are how these are named. Um, tetraethylene pentamine and diethylaminopropylamine are also aliphatic amines used for curing. Uh, all of these give similar electrical properties and chemical resistance properties. Uh, the last one that is listed there gives a higher pot life, um, and it requires the addition of heat to completely cure this. And uh, that last one gives softer and lower heat deflection temperature resins overall. You can use tertiary amines, but those are used as catalysts, like I showed you before, um, and they're most effective in the presence of hydroxyl-containing molecules, typically in uh, catalytic amounts or 1.5 parts per hundred resin, sometimes up to 15 parts per hundred resin for low temperature cures, but if you have tertiary amines, they will likely degrade the cured resin properties in too high a, an amount. So these are your tertiary amines that can be used as well. We saw triethylamine and trimethylamine before, but you can also use benzyl dimethylamine, dimethylaminoethanol, and tris dimethylaminomethylphenol. Now these don't become part of the 3D network, they're just used as catalysts, but I wanted to mention them again when we were talking about amines. Aromatic amines are also used, but by overall, aliphatic amines are the most common curing agent. Uh, they pr the aromatic amines, however, pr provide the best properties of all amine-cured epoxies. They require heat for cure, and that results in enhanced temperature resistance, enhanced chemical resistance, and enhanced pot life up to 18 hours. Um, and you get temperature resistance up to 350 Fahrenheit or, uh, compared to the 250 Fahrenheit for aliphatic amines. Um, these are mainly used for B-staged formulations, uh, but aromatic amines themselves are suspected carcinogens, so uh, sometimes they're avoided for that reason. 
The three main aromatic amine curing agents are metaphenylenediamine, 4,4'-methylenedianiline, and 4,4'-diaminodiphenylsulfone. So the thing you see here are, the again, these uh, amines that have hydrogens present on them, meaning that they can participate in the cross-linking reaction. Here are some cyclic amines. They can also be used as curing agents. Papyridine, uh, anaminoethylpapyrazine, menthane diamine, and m xylene diamine. Uh, these are mainly used for intermediate properties between aliphatic and aromatic amine curing agents. Uh, organic acids and phenols can also be used as curing agents for epoxy resins, but typically they serve as better accelerators for other curing agents. Acid anhydrides are the second most used curing agents. So aliphatic amines are the first. Acid anhydrides are the second most used curing agents for epoxies after the aliphatic amines. In this case, the ring opening is initiated by the presence of active hydrogens, so hydroxyls, water, or Lewis bases. And the acid anhydrides are not skin sensitizing, but their vapors are irritating. So um, again, they have some toxicity issues. Uh, liquid forms easily blend with epoxy resins. Uh, but solid acid anhydrides need heat and very good mixing. Um, they provide higher temperature resistance than aliphatic amines and lower temperature resistance of aromatic amines. So, um, and they can sometimes be more economically viable than some of the other fancier amine curatives that give you intermediate properties between aliphatic amines and aromatic amines. So here's an example of an acid anhydride reaction with an epoxy. Uh, you can add alcohol or water to open up the anhydride. That anhydride then opens up the epoxy ring and then you, you propagate the reaction. Phthalic anhydride is an example of this type of anhydride. It's the least expensive of all the anhydrides, but it sublimes, meaning that it'll go from vapor to solid and will coat the sides of your reactor, so it has to be reacted quickly. And it's used for general purpose type applications. Uh, this is hexahydrophallic anhydride. This does not sublime, and it has a le nice light color. And this is often used for electrical encapsulation or filament winding applications. This is natic methyl anhydride. This is a liquid, therefore it blends very easily with the resin. It provides good arc resistance and a high heat deformation temperature in the final epoxy. It's light in color, and it's also used in electrical filaments and filament windings. This is dodecyl succinic anhydride. This is liquid. Uh, this provides uh, good impact strength and flexibility in the resulting resin. It has advantageous electrical properties as well. This is relatively expensive, uh, and so it's typically mixed with other uh, less expensive anhydrides to reduce the cost. This is pyromolytic dianhydride. This is a solid, and this is typically used as a blend with other anhydrides to enhance its ability to cross-link with epoxy resins. Maleic anhydride, being inexpensive, is usually what it's mixed with. This provides moderate heat deflection temperatures and good insulation properties in the resulting resin. This is benzophenone tetracarboxylic dianhydride. This is a solid, and this provides exceptional heat deflection temperature, so up to 600 Fahrenheit or 315 Celsius in the resulting resin. This is chlorindic anhydride. This is a solid, and this is typically used for flame retardancy. As I mentioned in uh, other systems, whenever you see a halogen, that's usually incorporated for flame retardancy. So this is the end of the second of three, not two, but three of the epoxy videos. And so you'll have a few questions to answer after this one and then move on to epoxy video three.